Circle. In this cave by the restless sea, we are met to call from out the past stories strange and weird. Bellkeeper, pull the bell so all may know we are gathered again in the weird circle. of a world gone by speak again the immortal tale, The Lifted Veil. A certain Dr. Minier was working in the experimental laboratory of his office when young Latimer Hemming dropped in to see him. The two friends smiled genially at each other. Then Latimer suddenly started pacing nervously up and down the length of the room. I, I don't know why I came to you, Doctor. You're the last person in the world I'd expect to believe in psychic phenomena. I don't know about that. What's bothering you, Latimer? Well, it's, it's all so incredible. Frankly, I don't expect you to believe me. Why don't you stop pacing the floor? Sit down quietly in a chair and tell me the whole story. Here. Sit down here. Well, I had a vision. A premonition, a, a warning. The veil of the future lifted and I saw into it. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. No, I'm, I'm not insane. There's never been any insanity in my family. Ask my father, he'll tell you that... The Hemmings are constitutionally solid as a rock. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, tell me more about this lifting of the veil, this premonition. Well, the first time it occurred was about three years ago, shortly before Bertha and I were married. The first time, eh, Latimer? Yes, it's... Well, it, it's recurrent. It, 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 it comes again and again. Oh. Uh, go on. Well, I, I see the face of a woman. She's lying in bed, her... Her face is a death mask. Mm, you choose nice visions. Now, please don't make fun of me. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, anyway, suddenly the woman sits upright in bed, points an accusing finger at me and says, You killed one man, and you'll kill another. And then, laughing hysterically, she falls back in the bed. Mm-hmm. And then what happens? Well, then the vision becomes hazy and disappears. Now, don't tell me I've been working too hard. I've never done an honest day's work in my life. I'd say forget the whole thing. Yes, that's what I was afraid of. I've been trying to dismiss it from my mind, Dr. Munier, but... Well, the other day... The other day, my wife hired a new maid, a person by the name of Archer Bernard. What's so extraordinary about that? She has the exact same face as the face in my vision. A perfect replica. Oh. What'll I do, Doctor? Shall I, shall I tell Bertha? Shall I force her to discharge the maid? You know how practical Bertha is. She'll think I've lost my mind. Yes, she will. I don't know how to advise you, Latimer. But if this Archer girl threatens your peace of mind, there's only one thing to do. You mean dismiss her? Yes. But I wouldn't tell Bertha the real reason. Any excuse will do. Yes, of course. Don't make an issue out of it, Latimer. Women get stubborn at times. Yes, how well I know that. Uh, doctor, would you do me a favor? Quite certainly. You're a good friend of Inspector Kane at headquarters. Would you have him do a little checking up on Archer? Yes. Yes, I'll do it. No harm in investigating the woman, I suppose. Stranger visions than this one of yours, my boy, have come to my attention. Well, <laughs> I'll see you at dinner tonight. At dinner? Yes, your wife invited me. Oh, and frankly, I'm rather curious to see this new maid, Archer Bernard, myself. 
Well, good night, Doctor, good and night. thanks. Thanks tremendously. Archer? Archer? Yes? Answer the doorbell, will you? Of course. Right away, madam. Good evening, Mr. Hemming. Oh, good evening, Archer. I, I'm sorry, I forgot my keys. Is my wife in? In the living room, sir. Well, thank you. Hello, darling. I'm sorry I'm so late. You are late, Latimer. Shame on you. There'll be guests for dinner this evening. What kept you so long? I dropped by Dr. Meneer's office. Aren't you feeling well? No, not too well. Oh, poor pet. Is my father coming over this evening? Yes, and please be nice to him. I'll be charming to him. That is, if he'll just stop trying to run my entire life for me. You can't really blame him, Latimer, if he's impatient to become a grandfather. I don't mind wishful thinking, but he's pretty insistent on my having a son. Just keep humoring him. After all, he's worked hard all his life and built up a large fortune. He just wants to be sure there'll be heirs to carry on the name. Bertha. Yes? What is it, dear? You know that new maid, Archer. I ought to know. I hired her. Bertha. Bertha, I wish you'd get somebody else in her place. She, she's incompetent. I find her exceedingly capable. Well, she's impudent. Well, I'll talk to her about it. Please, Bertha, if you don't mind, I just as leave oh, you didn't... darling, if you had any idea how much trouble I've gone to to get, well, any kind of help at all out here, you'd realize what a perfect gem archer is. You concentrate on your father and let me worry about the servant's pet. Yes, but... Uh... I won't hear another word about it, Latimer. Now go upstairs and get dressed. Your father and the doctor will be here within the hour, and if you're not prompt, your father will take out his temper on me. So hurry, dear, please. I won't be long. Hurry, dear, you always dawdle so long. I'll hurry. I wonder. Perhaps if I told Bertha the truth, maybe it's all in my mind anyway, but, but the vision, the premonition, so recurrent. I might try talking to the girl myself. Oh, no, that wouldn't be right. What are you doing in this room, Archer? I, uh, oh, well, I... Well, you what? I was just straightening up a bit, sir. I thought you straightened my room this morning. It needed straightening again. Oh, did it indeed? I found it quite an order after you were through the first time. And what's this? That, sir? This package. Oh, give it to me, sir. I, I almost forgot it. Oh, no, no, no. Don't unwrap it. Please. Why? Well, I, I... Poison. Yes. Rat poison. What for? Rats in the basement. Your wife asked me to get it. She did. Well, this isn't the basement, Archie. I know, sir. I, I'm sorry, sir. I, I Take that I... rat poison and stay out of my room. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I wonder. I wonder. Archer Bernard. The face in my dream. My evil genius. I'm sorry I'm late, Father. Oh. Awfully sorry. I warned him not to be late, Dad. Latimer has never been on time for anything in his life. I speak with authority. Oh, I'm sorry, Father. I'm sorry. Uh, hello, Doctor. Your wife has been entertaining us very well in your absence, Latimer. Do you think so, Doctor? I'm sure of it, my dear. You've more charm than the law allows, anyway. <laughs> You are nice, Doctor. <laughs> Sometimes, though, I think you're afraid of me. What's this? What's this, Doctor? Afraid of my daughter-in-law? Nonsense. Complete nonsense. Bertha was only joking, Father. Joking? Why? What was funny about it? I'm sorry if I don't see the point. We Hemmings have always had a very highly developed sense of humor. Constitutionally speaking, anyway. What? I don't har hardly hear you. Dinner is served, Mrs. Hemming. Thank you, Archer. Well, come along, all of you. I think we need a new topic of conversation. Yes, obviously, Bertha. <laughs> Go ahead, Father. Yes, all right. There we are. You sit next to me, Dad. Doctor, over here. Thank you. And you at the foot of the table, Latimer. Such is ever the husband's lot. What? What? Uh, do you know, Dr. Meunier, we've been hearing a lot about you lately in the village. Ah, oh, that's why I've been invited over this evening. 
Your feminine curiosity has been aroused, eh? <laughs> Frankly, yes. Uh, about what, Doctor? About what? Mrs. Hemming is curious, I think, about the experiments I've been performing. What experiments are those? Well, I've been experimenting with a new serum. I have the typical doctor's age-old hope of bringing the dead back to life. Oh, is that why your office is so littered with mice and rabbits? Yes, and... quite. Have you succeeded? No, not completely. But I've had some interesting results. If I inject my serum into the veins of a dead animal, I... Well, I can bring back a heartbeat for a period of ten seconds or so. At least under certain conditions. Why, it, it sounds barbaric. What are the conditions? If the animal has died of poison. Uh, I don't think this is dinner conversation. I think it's fascinating, Bertha. You would, dear. I don't believe it. Uh, Mr. Hemming will carve the roast, Archer. Uh, yes, ma'am. Doctor, what is the procedure you usually go through in this experiment? I, um, uh, well, usually I feed the animal, preferably a white rat, regular rat poison. It works very fast and painlessly. I disguise the poison in milk which I feed my victim. Archer, really? I'm sorry, ma'am, awfully sorry. I, I didn't mean to drop the plate. Uh... Uh, go on with your theory, Doctor. Um, then I use the serum. I, I, I wait approximately one half hour. Then I go ahead. How do you inject the serum, Doctor? Are you really interested, Bertha? Yes, very. By hypodermic. I have one in my medical bag in case you'd like to see it. Uh, don't bother. Don't, don't bother. I don't believe you can bring a dead man back to life by injection. I don't believe it. Oh, there's no convincing father, Doctor. You might as well give up. Uh, talking of poison reminds me. I didn't know you had any rats in the cellar, Bertha. What are you talking about, Latimer? Well, Archer told me the house was infested and you ordered her to buy rat poison this afternoon. Nonsense, Latimer. Will you care for gravy on your meat, Doctor? No, thanks. Just as is. None for me, either. I'm a man who doesn't believe in gravies. Never have. Never have. I know you will, Latimer. Archer. Yes, ma'am? The gravy for Mr. Hemming. Yes, ma'am. Am I the only gravy eater in the house? <laughs> Obviously, darling. And I had Archer prepare a special gravy for you. It's very good for you. Latimer loves cream gravies, Doctor. He's like a child about them. Here you are, sir. Oh, thank you, Archer. Cream gravies. Mmm. Be careful not to get any rat poison in that, Latimer. Or you might be my first human experiment. <laughs> and I'm looking for one. Well, I hope I don't fit the qualifications, Doctor. I shouldn't enjoy the prospect of being a corpse. It's been a very enjoyable evening, Bertha. A very enjoyable evening. Nothing I enjoy so much as discussing life. Yes, discussing life. You must drop over soon again, Father. Latimer? I wonder where he's gone. Probably to the kitchen. He raids iceboxes at midnight. I'll get him, Bertha. Never mind. He'll come out eventually, if Dad doesn't mind waiting. No, I'll go get him. I don't see how you put up with him at times, Bertha. A lovely girl like yourself must have a lot of patience to stand for my son's nonsense. He's my husband. Oh, you scared me for a minute, Doctor. I... Did I, Latimer? Your family is asking for you. What are you doing? I'm collecting some of this cream gravy for you in this little bottle. Would, Would you test it at the laboratory? It tasted funny to me, and I've been feeling slightly ill. Come, come. Don't be a slave of your imagination. Will you examine this gravy anyway tonight, please? Of course, my boy, of course. If you don't feel well later on, I'll give you a pill to take, just in case. I hope I have some with me. Yes, I hope you do, too. Oh, yes, here they are. Right in my right-hand pocket. You're a walking hospital. I always carry three things with me. My hypodermic with serum in case somebody should die of poison... My pills for emergencies such as this, and a good pouch of tobacco. <laughs> I never like anybody else's. Oh, thank you, Doctor. 
I'll drop by in the morning, and you can give me the report on this gravy. Do that, Latimer. Yes, indeed. Do that. I'd better put the bottle in my pocket so no one sees it. Hal, come along. Let's go back to the living room. All right. Well, Doctor, did you finally dig Latimer out of the kitchen? Yes, indeed. Well, I must be going, Latimer. Good night, Father. Come again soon. I will. I will. And I hope the next time I come, you two will have joyous news for me. Yes, Father. I'll walk you home, Mr. Hemming. Fine, Doctor. Good night, Latimer. Good night, my dear. Good night, Father. I'll uh, see you in the morning, Latimer, eh? Yes, Doctor, in the morning. Well, it's been a long evening and a very dull one. Yes, very dull. I'm tired. So am I. Uh, Bertha... About Archer. Latimer, are you going to start that again? Yes. She lied to me about the rat poison, and frankly, I don't trust the girl. It's just your imagination. I'll talk to her in the morning. I wouldn't worry if I were you. If I don't get a satisfactory explanation, I promise I'll discharge her immediately. Yes, I wish you would, dear. I'd feel much better about the whole thing if you would. Very much better. I'm very tired, Bertha. I'm going upstairs to bed. Oh, good morning, Latimer. Good morning. You keep your word, don't you? Up at the very break of dawn. I didn't sleep very well last night, Doctor. I don't wonder. Come in, come in. You see, as soon as my wife and I were upstairs, I had a recurrence of the premonition. You did? Yes. Hmm. That's very strange. Why? Sit down, Latimer, and I'll show you why. Sit down over here near these two test tubes. Over here? Yes, that's right. Now, look. Here are two test tubes with colorless liquid inside of them. Yes. In this little box next to the first test tube is some rat poison. Now, as I drop some into the first test tube, what happens? The liquid is turning red. Very good so far. Now, in this jar is the cream gravy you were served last night. As I drop some into this tube, what happens? It turns pink. Which means only one thing, that a small amount of rat poison is present in the gravy. A small amount? Just enough to make you ill, not to kill you. It's a cute little trick. Progressive illness. Nobody would ever suspect poison in that case. It would take about seven months before you die. Nice girl, aren't you, huh? Yes, very nice. But why has this been tried? That's what interests me. Why? Doctor, I haven't the faintest idea. Uh, what did you find out about Archer Bernard? Well, I asked Inspector Kane, and he suggested I drop in this morning. Could you go over with me right away? Yes, of course. He has all the information we'll want. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Come in, come in, come in. Good morning, Inspector Kane. Good morning. This is Latimer Hemming, the gentleman I told you about. Oh, yes, yes, yes. How do you do? How do you do, sir? Sit down, gentlemen. I understand you've inquired about a certain Archer Bernard. Yes, I did. What do you know about her? We ask you first. Well, we've already made quite a thorough investigation of the lady in question. Yes. Her name is not Archer Bernard, but Doreen Macefield. Macefield? Why, that's my wife's maiden name. Doreen Macefield? Why, why, this Archer woman must be my wife's sister, yes. She's her sister, Dr. Bertha once told me about her sister. Yes, Doreen Maysfield was arrested five years ago for petty theft. She was released from prison only a few months back. Well, why are you looking for her now? Because at that time, she was also suspected of murder. Poisoning? Exactly. The victim was a man, was a friend of your wife's. Oh, what happened, Inspector? The evidence was insufficient to indict her at the time, but conclusive proof fell into our hands quite by accident the other day. Your call was coincidental. We were about to go to your house to pick her up. Well, why don't you come along with us, Inspector? Yes, my carriage is waiting outside. Splendid, Doctor, splendid. Poor Bertha, spending her lifetime trying to protect her sister just because she loves her. Why didn't she confide in me? When we see Bertha and her sister together, we'll have the answer to many things. Latimer, Hello, why... darling. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. This is Inspector Kane, Mrs. Hemming. How do you do? What's this all about? Uh, come in, Inspector. Thank you. Latimer. It's... Darling, it's, it's about Archer. 
Archer. Just what is this? Bertha, I know the truth about Archer. Uh, Why didn't you tell me? Oh, Latimer, Archer is my problem. I didn't want to burden you. Now, Mrs. Hemming, don't you worry. Just call in your sister, please. I can't, Inspector. I can't. The inspector's not going to hurt her, dear. He just wants to talk to her. There's nothing for you to be afraid of. Latimer. You've protected your sister all your life, Bertha, you poor darling. Go ahead, Mrs. Hemming. Call her. I... Archer. Archer. Look, Doctor, look. <coughs> her face is bloodless. It's ghastly, like the face I see in my vision. Do Archer. Oh. She's sick, quickly. The woman's going to faint. Help me, Inspector. Help me, of course. Oh, I never... I never wanted I... Oh, oh. Archer. Oh, doctor. Doctor, save. Save. Archer. Oh, Doreen. Oh, oh Doreen, my darling sister. Doreen, speak to me. It's no use, Bertha. Archer committed suicide. She's... Dead? Oh, no. No. Inspector, help me carry her into her room. I want to examine the body. Certainly. Oh, my sister. My darling sister, I loved her, Latimer. No matter what she did, I loved her. Of course you did, Bertha. Of course you did. Take her feet very gently, Inspector. Uh, which way is her room, Mrs. Hemming? At the head of the stairs. Ready, Doctor? I'll come along. No, I... no, Mrs. Hemming. No, Bertha. Why don't you go to your room and rest? If we need you, we'll call you. But I... Please, please, do as I say. I'm still your doctor, remember. Oh, all right. Latimer, as soon as you can, join me in Archer's room. Yes, Doctor, as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, Latimer, will you forgive me? Forgive you, Bertha. There's nothing to forgive. You're a very honest, faithful person. Now, come. Come along, darling. Lie down and rest. This has all been such a frightful shock to you. Oh, dear Latimer, so understanding. My wife is resting now, Doctor. Good. Then you can give us some help here. The half hour is almost over. You mean you're... Archer died of rat poisoning. I feel that this first human experiment will be a definite benefit to the future of science. Yes, but this is not a scientific laboratory, Doctor. No, I realize that. But this opportunity comes once in a lifetime. The doctor is quite right, Mr. Hemming. Give him permission to go ahead. If my wife ever found out, she'd die of horror. There's no need for her ever to know. The half hour is drawing to a close, Latimer. Have I your permission? I should say, has science your permission? Yes, yes, of course, Doctor. Go ahead. Inspector, help me roll up the sleeve. Certainly. Now, what are you going to do? It's a good thing I always carry this with me. Well, first I draw some of my own blood. Uh, this way. Doctor. It's not as painful as it looks. No. I mix my blood with a serum. Like this. Hmm. Fascinating, Doctor. How much longer have we got till the half hour is completed, Inspector? Three more seconds. Oh. Hmm. All right, Doctor. Now. I inject the serum into her arm. Like this. What are you doing, Doctor? Bertha, stay out of this room. Don't you dare experiment on my sister. Don't you dare. Hold her back, Inspector. Easy, my dear, easy. There, look. Look, she's beginning to breathe again. It works. Oh, no. No. Oh, Bertha. Bertha, I hate you. Oh, no, sister, no. I went to jail for you five years ago because I loved you. Oh, no. And you were no, beautiful. Archer. No, oh, no, darling. It was I that took the blame for everything you did. No, sister, no. Admit it, Bertha. Admit you killed one man. And you wanted to kill another because you hated him. You know, she wanted to kill you, Latimer, rather than have a child. Kill you, yes. Yes, and get your father's money. I was going to tell you, but... But she... She poisoned me first. Sister! Sister! Oh. Oh. Archer. Oh. Archer. Oh, I can sustain her life no longer. Archer, Archer! Oh, I... I'm, I'm sorry. Archer Bernard is... is dead. She lied! She lied! She I lied! I try to leave the room, Mrs. Hemming. You'll be wanted at headquarters. It's not true, Inspector. It's not true. I'm afraid it is, Latimer. 
When the dead return to life, they have too short a time to lie. Bertha, you... I'm sorry to have to tell you, Mr. Hemming, that we have suspected your wife for a long time. We could have proved her guilt without a voice from the grave. Come along, Mrs. Hemming. Bertha. Doctor. The veil. The lifted veil. The premonitions come true. From the time-worn pages of the past, we have brought you the immortal tale, The Lifted Veil. Bellkeeper, toll the bells.